as a busy mom, I am all about finding clever ways to make easy, cheap, and nutritious meals for my family of five. But cooking on a budget can be very time consuming, especially when we're cooking from scratch. I have three school-age children plus a household and a business to run, so sometimes I'm tight on both time and money, and I need a shortcut to get easy meals on the table for my family that's not gonna break the bank. Today, I've got two tasty recipes using an easy, cheap ingredient as a starting point that's available in just about any grocery store. Plus, I'll share several additional ideas for how to use this cheap, easy ingredient to get tasty meals on the table with very little fuss for your family. This first recipe is gonna start off with a box of the cheesy Italian shells variety of Hamburger Helper, but I'm actually going to use it as a jumping off point to make a really easy, dump and go crock pot soup. So I'm gonna grab a few other ingredients to throw into my cart and I'll show you what we're doing when we get home. The first thing I'm putting in my crock pot is an eight ounce can of tomato sauce and one can's worth of hot water. And now I'm taking just the seasoning packet from my hamburger helper box and I'm going to whisk that into this mixture. And the reason I wanna go ahead and do that before adding the rest of my ingredients is because sometimes these seasoning mi mixes, though convenient, because all your seasoning is right there, they often have a little bit of cornstarch in them, and if I don't kind of mix them in a little bit, they can clump up. Now I'm adding one can of diced tomatoes. I got the fire roasted, but you could get whatever kind of tomatoes you want. You could get crushed tomatoes. If you don't like chunky tomatoes, you could even use a little bit of marinara, you know, like jar pasta sauce. One package of pepperonis, and I actually just chopped mine up. I wanted to get the little mini pepperonis. I think Hormel makes them, but my Walmart was out, so it just took me like 30 seconds to chop up these pepperonis, no big deal. And I'm gonna fill up this diced tomato can once with water and once with milk and add that in to the crock pot as well. Now I'm gonna pop the lid on this and I'm going to let it simmer on high for about two to three hours before we come back and finish it up. Other ideas for add-ins for this soup can be things that you might consider pizza toppings, like mushrooms, or sliced olives or green pepper. I'd like to say that I didn't include those things because my kids don't like them, but actually I'm not a huge fan of mushrooms or olives, and I'm just keeping it pretty basic here. If you wanted to cook up some ground sausage to use in place of the pepperonis, you absolutely could, or if you were wanting to try like some cooked shredded chicken, I'm just going with the pepperonis because I know that my kids really like them because they're fully cooked, and I know that they're gonna add a lot of flavor because pepperonis are heavily seasoned. While the soup is cooking, we're actually going to whip up another recipe. I've got my other Oven preheating to 350 behind me because we're gonna be making an easy cheesy ham and potato casserole and I have a friend who is stopping by later to pick this up to take home to her family for dinner it's sort of an occupational hazard when you are a food content creator that sometimes uh, you have videos that you want to make and you have more food than your family can eat so I am often like calling up neighbors or friends and just saying hey can you stop by and pick this up or do you want to come over and have dinner or do you need anything for your family so we're gonna get that going uh, for her and I'm really excited about this one I think it's gonna turn out really well I have two boxes of the hamburger helper potato stroganoff here and I have taken the seasoning packets out and I am going to whisk these with two cups of hot water. Once all my seasonings are dissolved, I'm going to whisk in one can of cream soup. And I'm gonna use cream of chicken, but I think cream of mushroom would be fine. I thought about cream of celery, and I even saw in my grocery store that Campbell's now carries a cream of potato. I thought that might be a little potato overload, so I just went with the cream of chicken since we're not big fans of mushroom in this house. I'm also going to add one eight ounce container of sour cream and two cups of milk. And I'm gonna just stir that all together so that it's combined, mixed really well, and set it aside. Into my casserole dish, I'm going to pour the potatoes from my box mixes. Ooh, look, There's a purple potato in there. Huh. And I'm going to spread over the top of that some thinly sliced ham. I decided just to use deli ham that I could slice up really thin. I thought about using ham steaks that I could kind of 
slice up into chunks. You could use another kind of fully cooked ham. I just thought it would be really good to have like the thin sliced ham sort of spread evenly all throughout this casserole. I have some cheddar cheese here. It's already shredded up and I'm just gonna sprinkle half of this over the top of this mixture right now. I'm gonna save the other half for later. Now I'm gonna take my sauce mixture from before and I'm gonna just gently pour that over the top of the entire mixture. I know this is a lot of liquid, but those potatoes are dry so they have to reconstitute. And I'm going to pop this into a 350 degree oven covered with foil. I'm gonna let it bake for 30 minutes and then check on it and we'll see where we are. Now this is the kind of easy convenience meal or shortcut meal that comes in handy on a certain kind of evening for me. I know that it still takes basically an hour for this to cook, but I'm not actually cooking for that entire hour. So it takes me just a few minutes to stir together these ingredients and pop this into the oven. And then I can you know, run out and pick up a kid from swim or from soccer practice or from band practice, or I can finish doing the long laundry or any other little household chores I might have or helping a kid with homework or with a school project. So it's the kind of easy recipe that while it takes time, doesn't actually take very much effort <laughs> from me. And if I have a few minutes earlier in the evening to get it going, then I get a lot of my time back that I can focus on other tasks around my house. This has been in the oven for 50, five zero minutes total. And I took the foil off and now all I'm gonna do is sprinkle the rest of the cheese over the top and I'm just gonna let it sit here on this hot pad and cool down just a little bit. And this is the kind of dish that will set up just a little bit more as it cools off. So I'm probably just gonna let it set for about 10 or 15 minutes or so. And I would just serve this with like a really easy side salad. I also thought about stirring in some peas and carrots or maybe even some broccoli if you wanted to put some veggies right in the casserole. And in the end, I decided just to keep it in its regular simplest form, but there's some other options for you as well. You might be thinking, but Mindy, you can make hamburger helper style dishes from scratch using pantry staple ingredients. And I have many times made lots of one pot meals, one pot pasta or rice meals. I think I even have a video dedicated specifically to from scratch versions of hamburger helper style meals. But this kind of shortcut can come in handy in a lot of situations. If somebody maybe has recently moved or they're just starting out in a new kitchen and they don't have a full cache of spices and seasonings and pantry staples like cornstarch, which is often present in these box mixes, then maybe being able to utilize the little seasoning packet can be really helpful. And sometimes it's nice just to be able to stir everything together and use a very limited short list of ingredients for a recipe and not have to peruse through the spice cabinet or the pantry searching for just the right mix of things. I didn't add any additional seasonings to these. I didn't even add salt and pepper, and they were very, very flavorful. 10 out of 10. I would never have known that started as a box of Hamburger Helper. Hmm. The soup has been cooking for about three hours, and it smells really, really good. All I'm going to do now is pour in the pasta from my box of Hamburger Helper. Give it a little stir. Pop the lid back on, I'm keeping this on high, and it should only take about 15 to 20 minutes for that pasta to finish cooking. If you wanted to make this recipe on the stove, you absolutely could. You would just simmer all of the ingredients minus the pasta together for maybe 20 or 30 minutes on the stove, then add the pasta in until it's cooked and you'd have the soup. I just like the convenience of the slow cooker here and I wanted to see how it turned out. Now, the only thing left to do is add a little cheese and I picked up this provolone and mozzarella blend. I thought that, that was very fitting for a pizza flavor. And then this will be ready to go. You'll notice that I'm adding things to these box mixes to improve the taste and the nutritional value, you know, by adding some vegetables, but I'm also doing that to increase the volume. I know the box says that it makes five servings, but I find those servings to be pretty small and not totally satisfying for my family and our appetites. So let me share with you some of my favorite add-ins and also just give you some more ideas where these box mixes are concerned. I know not everybody is a huge fan of Hamburger Helper. Hopefully those people have already left the video, 
by this point but if you are somebody who likes it or just uses it on occasion leave me a comment below and let me know your favorite kind there are several different kinds that I have cycled through I like to try some of the new ones that pop up from now and again but actually some of my favorites are the ones that use egg noodles like the stroganoff and there's like a beef pasta just like that's the name of it and my Walmart actually carries some in the Great Value brand as well. So they have the stroganoff pasta skillet, the beef pasta skillet. I'm tossing it around everywhere. But this is the one I was talking about too in the Hamburger Helper brand. But I've tried several of these before, use them in budget meal plans. And I think the off brand is pretty tasty too. It's not quite as good as the name brand in my opinion, but it'll work in a pinch. It saves me about 50 cents a box. You might have noticed that I used fully cooked proteins in the recipes that I shared, the pepperonis in the soup and the ham and the cheesy potato casserole. And some other options for fully cooked proteins that I think work well with these meals are things like frozen meatballs or rotisserie chicken or fully cooked smoked sausage. And that can add to the convenience factor because you don't have to like fully cook the meat before you add all of the other ingredients. So it can help the meal come together a little bit quicker. Another option and an even cheaper option where proteins are concerned are beans. Lentils, black beans, chili beans, chickpeas. I even played around briefly with the idea of using like a can of prepared chili, like meat and bean chili, along with the cheeseburger mac variety to create like a, like a chili mac style, <laughs> using that as the protein instead of like, some kind of meat that I would have to cook with it. To rev up the nutritional value, I just throw in some veggies, whether it be frozen veggies like peas and carrots or mixed veggies or broccoli or canned vegetables like canned tomatoes, mixed vegetables, green beans. I like to toss in some vegetables if I can and serve some vegetables alongside it as well. And then this is just my family's preference, but to enhance the flavor, I almost always stir in a little bit of extra dairy, whether that be a little bit of sour cream or topping it with a little bit of extra cheese at the end right before we're ready to serve it. A few tablespoons of salsa is another good add-in for these box mixes, especially the Tex-Mex inspired ones like the enchilada or the taco rice. If you are adding extra pasta to your meal, you know, to kind of bulk it up a little bit, maybe pasta that you have already in the house. My general rule when I'm adding extra pasta to these dishes is for every four ounces, which is about one dry cup of pasta, I need to add one cup or eight ounces of liquid, whether that be broth or water or milk. So it's kind of like the beginning of a choose your own adventure. It's just a jumping off point and I can peruse my pantry, my fridge, my freezer. Sometimes I can use up leftover veggies or leftover proteins and throw together all different kinds of meals with that box mix as the base. These can also make really, really great, easy lunch preps that you can make ahead. For instance, you take maybe the cheesy taco rice and you make that up, throw in some black beans, maybe some corn, a can of Rotel, and you put it in the refrigerator. And then over the course of the week, you pack it for lunch with maybe tortillas to make tacos or with salad greens to make taco salad. And you've got like a really easy lunch prep again, that you can make several days ahead and eat on all week long. And I'm also reminded since we just got back from a trip that that would make a really good like vacation meal. Like if you're getting a house at the lake or the beach or in the mountains, because you don't have to worry about the seasonings. The seasonings are already in there. Here are a couple more videos from my channel with quick and easy meal ideas you can check out next.